scientist, and this is the second to last final scientist of the season. And um, the partner I am with today is James from Flynn Scientific. All right, before we get to James, Simon, you have a couple of announcements here. The last, this is the last week of Simon the Scientist before summer break. We will have some unplanned sporadic sessions during summer, so stay tuned. Last week's prizes are sponsored, sponsored by Manitoba Possible. One us are Lucy and Edward from Axdale and Bryson Willow and Capri from Churchill. Oh, uh, last week I was challenged to build a Thanos, a science vehicle, and an experiment machine. That's right. So last week you had a Lego Science Day, and you built an entire Lego Science Lab. And one of the challenges was a reverse challenge where they could challenge you to build something else. And you had three people challenge you to build something. So let's see what you got. You were challenged to build Thanos. I got the big Thanos also. I added the little infinity gauntlet. I added Thanos and the little infinity gauntlet. Very cool. Okay, what else did you get here? What else did you build? The computer. A little computer. A little futuristic computer. Oh, can you tell about it? Little computer thing. Oh, ice scanner thingy. Radio wave tower. Radio wave tower is the actual computer part and um, a nice camera thingy. So if anyone tries to find out my secret files, um, they won't find out because it has a nice scanner. Cool. And then the last one you were challenged was a science vehicle. So. Whoop. <laughs> Not by the helmet. No, maybe time. not by the helmet. Okay, go ahead. So, um, this is the driver, the steering wheel, the wheels, and um, it has two cool features. Um, this is a solar panel for when it's out driving at day, but if I'm driving out at night, I use these two big battery thingies. Very cool. All right. So, Simon, you completed your challenges for last week. Um, let's talk about this week. This week is a very special week. Prizes are sponsored by Flynn Scientific. Today our guest is scientist extraordinaire, um, James Pelson. Our challenge today is to stump James in any science topic you can think of. Um, I, um, sorry, um, our challenge today is is to stump James in any science topic you can think of. Let's start asking James the tough questions right away. All right. So do you want to, let's start with introducing James here. Hello, James. Hello, everybody. And Pleasure to be here. James, where are you uh, coming to us from today? Today I'm coming to you from my house in Hamilton, Ontario. I'm not down at the Flynn Labs because... Everyone's pretty much still at home, so we're going to do some science at home activities today. That's right from the kitchen. That's pretty cool because we're right here from home too, so everyone can participate in these at home activities. And we've also got a joke from Camille Wilson. We do. We already have some hellos coming in, and we already have a joke. So, uh, Simon, I'll ask you this joke, and then you can ask James the next joke. Okay. I know what this joke is. Okay, so let's ask why, James. Why does the firefly get bl bad grades? I don't know. He wasn't very bright. <laughs> All right, now Simon's got one for you, too. I'll that for the rest of the week, I promise mm -hmm. you. Um, <laughs> what were the chemist's favorite, I mean, famous last words? And now for the taste test. And now for the taste test. That's true. Never taste chemicals. Yep. So James is big on safety, and uh, that's one of the things that James noticed about Simon the Scientist, too. I sure did. And I noticed that Simon has his lab coat on, 
and when needed, he has his goggles on. And if if you don't have goggles, well, mine are not clear. They're br they're blue. I I know you. I love them. <laughs> but at a minimum, have some type of personal protective gear. And if you don't wear glasses like I do, you can even wear your sunglasses for some of these neat things that we're going to do that involve chemicals, salt water, detergents, just to be safe. All right, so Simon, goggles on. Um, glasses aren't that safe because chemicals can also come through the slits. That is true. That is very, very true. So, does anybody have a stumper question for me yet? Well, we don't have any yet from our audience, but we do have some from science, from science, I was about to say, from Simon. Um, what happens when a black hole collides with another black hole? Well, there are two answers. Don't ask me quantum physics questions. <laughs> Black holes are not super small. Quantum no, is small, not. cosmos is big. They are enormous, you're right. And they're so powerful that not even light can escape from them. Did you know that, Simon? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting fact, isn't it? Yep. But I have friends at the Perimeter Institute that would love to talk to you about those types of questions. I defer to those experts. You know what that means, Simon? I've stumped him. You've stumped him. Already? Uh, so what's stumped. what's the answer? When uh, two black holes collide, what happens? There are two answers. Either it would um, create a supernova, like when a star um, explodes. Clearly, but, yeah. Or it would just create a bigger black hole. Clearly, yes. There we go. Do you want to ask him one more stumper before we get started? Um, what is the biggest asteroid? The biggest asteroid ever recorded? Like an asteroid? Well, no. Well, no. Well, no. Um. Well, known to mankind. Known to mankind. Well, I would say that would be the one that crashed into the ocean near Mexico and caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. Wait, that was in the ocean? I thought it was on land. It was the ocean in front oh. of Mexico. Well, it's now an ocean today. Um, there is underwater now. Well, it is actually Ceres, which is 932 kilometers. Pretty cool. Lots of prizes from Flynn today. I can feel it. <laughs> yes. So everyone get in your questions and you can ask James questions about any science topic you like and we're going to see if we can stump them. And just by asking a question, you are entered to win for this week's prizes. So James, I think Simon's ready to get started on any one of the activities you have for him. Fantastic. Well, let's do a nice, simple conversation starter. Take a look at these three coins here. Okay. Two pennies and a quarter. You could use a nickel, dime, pennies if you still have them in a jar at home. We have a penny. Oh, that's great news. And I have pipettes at home. Sometimes people have pipettes. If you don't have a pipette, you could use a medicine dropper. That you can get from the gro the pharmacy or the grocery store, even the dollar store. If you don't have that, you can even use a nail or a little paintbrush. Now the question is, how many drops of water can we get to fit on, on the top of that penny right there? How many drops of water do you think will fit on there, Simon? Oh, I don't know. No, take a guess, Simon. Give me a number. Give me a number, my man. Two. Two drops. 
And these are no. quite small. Keep your followers safe. Does anybody say more than two? All right, everyone, let's guess. How many let's drops guess. of water can fit on a penny? Let's get in some responses. Yep, and we'll, we'll put that penny right there, away from all the others. Okay, and while we're waiting for some responses, Simon, you've got a penny here as well. Penny. And you've got some water. Some water. And we even happen to have... A pipette. Also, you have a pipette, a straw... A tablespoon and I forget what it's called. Well, Wait, a teaspoon. And a teaspoon, yeah. So here's the pipette. So we have some um, estimates. We have Willow in Churchill says one drop. I have a plastic nose. Oh, okay. Bryson. Willow, yes. Bryson says three. Three drops. That hey, also from Churchill. We have two guesses coming in from Pian and Point. Um, okay. Twenty six from Morgan and fifteen from Owen. Those are high numbers, 15 and 26, okay. Yeah, and I think Simon's sticking with his two. Simon's going to stick with two. I'm in the middle of Willow and Bryson. Yeah, so we have some more guesses. CJ says 62. And Isabel says 182. What? <laughs> and what does Oscar say? Six. Oscar says six. So two... So two Bryson's equals Oscar. <laughs> yeah. So oh, we're going all the way from right. one. Yeah. Pretty much so our lowest number is one. And we go all the way up. What's the highest number? 182. 182. So that's quite a variance when you look at that. I the think, number of pots that can fit on a penny. I think you would have to take like um, a cup, um, probably... Um, like around 1,000 centimeters each drop. 1,000 oh, centimeters. Well, let's, let's test that theory, Simon. Do you know how to use your pipette? Yes, I do. You squeeze the top part, then That's it will right. suck up the water. The and then you put it inside the liquid and carefully open it up. And you'll see. Can you see that it filled up inside the bowl with all that liquid? Yeah, mine's just sticking. Mine's just sticking at the end for some reason. All right. So let's. You want to count together? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I'm going to. We have James doing his, and we have Simon's doing his, and I can kind of see both at the same time. So Simon, you just have to make sure that it's one drop at a time, not a whole bunch at a time. Okay. So don't touch the penny. Okay. Simon's got one. Okay. I'll, we'll let Simon two, do his, and then I'll three, do mine. Four, five, six, seven, not too fast, eight, nine, ten, eleven, don't touch it, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, oh, don't wiggle the table, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Oh, careful, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24, 25, 26, don't touch 27, it, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, 31, 32. Oh, there, then it spilled over. It was 32. 32, I bet you, Simon, I can get more than 32 drops on my pen. Okay, let's count again. Count again. Contest accepted. Okay, let's count with James. Contest accepted. Can you see it's almost about to come out? you see that? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 
I want to see what it looks like in 3D. 47, 40, ah, 47. That's by 17 drops for the nine. Now, what are some variables involved with just that simple experiment right there? Um, physics? Okay, physics, chemistry, all kinds of things. But what are the specific variables? So let's look at that. So Simon, or let's tell everyone. Wait, surface te sur than mine. So let's talk about the variables first. So what are the things that could have changed in your um, trial and James's trial? Well, um, James was doing it like small drops, like not too far away from each other drop. Yeah. So your technique is a variable. What else is a variable? Oh, yeah. You're doing very small drops. Yes, indeed. I want to just do one big blob. Now, what's that? Dawn dish soap. Dish soap, okay? So I'm going to move that same penny. I dried it off. I'm going to put it right over here, okay? Okay, so we have to dry off our penny, and we're going to move our penny over, too. And did you see what I did? I put a tiny little drop, just a tiny little drop of detergent on my finger. Do you see that? Yep. Blue? Yeah. And if I just put it on the top, form a nice big soap bubble and I'll get a hundred drops on there? What well, actually, it will just fall off because um, the dish soap would break the tension of the water. Ooh, very good. So you're talking about surface tension, cohesion, micelles, things like that. So let's test your theory, shall we? Stump. Oh, just wait. We'll do this one first, then we'll we'll get to the questions. Hmm. Big bubbles. Oh, oh. Bubbles. Uh, Mi mini ants. Uh, I only got 12 drops on there. And then you're right. It just it won't stick on there now. Okay. Now I'll look Okay. Well, let's oh, think about why. This. Okay. You want to try yours with some dish soap? So put a little drop on your finger. Where is your finger here? There we go. Oh, oh, we put a little bit more on. That's okay. Put it on your penny. It's sticky. Yeah, it's a little bit sticky. Okay. okay. And now you're going to try again. Just more than 12. So do the same that you did before. Now we're not... Are you going to try to beat James? Yeah. This time? 12. See if you can get more than 12. Okay. Right on the penny, not on the side. One. Mm -hmm. Two, don't touch it though. Let it fall off. Three, Three four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go slow. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Look at what's happening. There it is. Yeah. yeah sixteen. That sounds like you beat me. Sixteen. I beat you by four. <laughs> Good for you. But guess what? Um, the the trial that you did without the dish soap, you had many, many more. And the same thing happened for James. Yeah. All right, James. This is all good. Do you have any so, questions? Um, I have a question. I like questions. After we're done with the drink part, is anyone going to drink those? <laughs> oh, we're not even there yet. We'll, we'll get to that part soon, I promise. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we have a couple people chiming in from our audience. Um, Give me the feedback. Yeah, Morgan says it's all about surface tension. Um, nice. Our friends up in Churchill also identified a variable as the size of the drops as well. 
and uh, Willow thought that it would create one big bubble. Well, in a way, it did create one big bubble. Oh, yeah. But oh, it wasn't okay. able to stick to adhere to the surface of the coin, so it just washed away. Whereas when it's just regular, dirty coin, it was able to stick on there, and it was a big water droplet, a big half dome was created on there. That's pretty so cool. When you're, in, when you're in school or you're in a lab and you're working with a graduated cylinder and it's filled with a liquid, it always curls up at the top. And that's called the meniscus. And that meniscus is formed because of surface tension and cohesion. Okay. The same thing happens in a water bowl. It's just a lot more difficult to see. So what exactly happened here? And what does this have to do with, even more so, with chemistry? Well, there's a lot of chemistry going on there. You can add a catalyst, which is something that will change the behavior or change or stimulate a reaction in your experiment or your activity. So we added dish soap. And the chemical inside of dish soap, the detergent part of it, is called SDS, or sodium dodecyl sulfate. But you already knew that, right, Simon? Yeah. Good. <laughs> I thought so. And the chemical that we used as a liquid, you guys call that water. Is that right? Yeah. You want a much cooler, like a scientific name for water? H2O. H2O, and if you say that as if it's a chemical, it is dihydrogen monoxide. Two hydrogen, one oxygen. Di, dihydrogen, dihydrogen monoxide, singular, H2O. Give that a try, Simon. <laughs> dihydrogen? Uh, yeah, dihydrogen monoxide. Your turn. Dihydrogen monoxide. Very good. Very good. Amazing. Now, oh, go ahead. Um, once we're done, we do have a couple stumpers for you, but we'll wait until we're all finished with this activity first. Well, we can. I'll take the stumper now. All right. I feel like I can't lose this one. Okay. So we've got two stumpers. The first one's coming from Morgan and Pian and Point. If the okay. fire in a blacksmith forge is hot enough to melt metal, why doesn't the forge itself melt? Well, maybe. Great, great question. I have, I have an idea. Sure, what's your idea, uh, maybe Simon? Maybe the metal surrounding the fire is like an alloy to um, make a stronger metal compound, and um, the metal that um, the locksmith is using is just like a normal metal itself. Oh, Simon, how do you even know these words? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Because I'm a nerd. <laughs> yeah. James, what's your response? Well, it depends on the type of forge. If I'm going to go use the term blacksmith and frame it in that era. Simon is correct in that the forge itself was created with two different materials. It also had uh, clay bricks inside it that would insulate, keep the heat inside without letting it go out into the metal and totally cut it apart, but keep all the heat inside where they could keep putting in that sword or that shovel or the ax and just pull it out, keep working on it, then they would do a whole bunch of other things afterwards. But it's a law of thermodynamics that play there. Amazing. I thought you were going to ask me why does the crazy glue stick to the inside of the bottle and then it, it, you have no crazy glue because it sticks to everything. Well, that's a whole other question. Now Simon's looking a little perplexed. That's my Simon stumper for you. There you go. Yeah, that's a Simon stumper. Um, okay. <laughs> I have another stumper coming in from our audience here. Isabel has a space question. What is the temp what is the temperature at the moon and outside of our galaxy? I think that is it, I think and it depends if it is in the 
sunlight or if it is in the shadow. Because just like on a sunny day, it's warmer in the sun than it is when you're in the shade in the same for, with the same sun. Would you agree to that? Uh, yeah. Okay, well that's good, because that's true. It is very, very cold on the surface of the moon. Like, negative 200. I don't know the exact numbers, because it's been a long time since I was in astronomy. But it's very cold. But it also can get quite warm directly in the sun. Why is that? Um, it can also get warm if it's in a solar eclipse happening. Yeah. That's true, but also the moon is in, in space, so there's a vacuum, it's almost like a vacuum that's there, but there's still heat that moves and particles still move. Great question. I have an answer for that question as well. I figured you had an answer, Jack. <laughs> so, um, in our planetarium that we take around, Iggy, uh, we have one of our scenario, or one of our science shows in Iggy talks about the temperature that it goes from plus about 150 to 200 down to minus 150 depending on the sun or shade at that moment um, and that the temperature difference is so extreme because the lack of atmosphere So we don't have clouds or anything else like that to retain any heat or to buffer out any heat as well. Sunsets are on Mars are blue. Sunsets on Mars are blue? Yeah. Interesting. I did not know that. Who knew, who knew iron gas was blue? Yeah. That I didn't know. Okay. So, um, I think we can keep taking in these stumpers, but it's time to get to our second activity here. Absolutely. Come on, come on. My fancy custom fabricated signage I did today. Number one, number two, number three. Would you agree? Mm. See that? One, two, and three? Yeah. Three glasses of water. I have three eggs. Oh, and here we have two glasses of water. Hang on, we'll just get rid of our penny stuff here. We have. I'm, I'm special, so yeah. you should only have two. I'm going to do some magic for you guys today. We have two glasses of water and we have two eggs as well. Okay. So hang on, hang on, Simon. Just leave them in the dish. We don't want them accidentally breaking. Can we, can we make icing out of these? First, yeah, into the dish, please, Simon. Why can't we make cake out of the eggs? <laughs> well, we can afterwards. We can reuse them. Yay. So, Simon, goggles on, though. Yes, please. All right, so, James, you can walk us through this. Goggles. What we have here are three regular eggs that you would get at the grocery store or from your farm. I have three identical glasses with a clear liquid dihydrogen monoxide which is what Simon? H2O or water. Excellent. Now over here if I was to drop this egg look, okay so let's just look at this big this is my pretend aquarium here. If I take this egg and I drop it in the aquarium full of water what's going to happen? The egg will, the, or is it going to float? I think it is going to float because um, the liquid in the, well, the yolk and the egg is, like, inside the of the egg isn't just all yellowy stuff. Okay. So, what, it, it, what does the audience say? Do they agree with you? Yeah, let's get in some responses. Will the egg sink or float? If, if it has air inside the egg, um, it would most likely float. If it's just the yolk inside the egg, then it would sink. All right. So what do you think, Simon? Sink or float? Only one. Float. Float? Okay. What does the rest of the audience say? Sink or float? 
Bryson and Willow say sink. Um, Morgan and Owen say sink. Oh dear, okay. I've gotten outnumbered already. <laughs> yeah, you're outnumbered already. <laughs> All right, let's see what, how, do you want Simon to do his first or you do yours first? Just well, let me do this one first then we'll do some fun. Oh, guess what, Simon? Isabel agrees with you that it'll float. Okay, well, Yay. I'm rising. <laughs> okay, let's check it out. Oh, my goodness. It's down there in the bottom. Can you see that? Okay. okay. Right to the bottom like a stone. Well, maybe it's because the egg doesn't have any air inside. Oh, well. So what do you think will happen in this class, Simon? Sink or float? Maybe sink. Or maybe float. So which one would that be? Float. Just a bit to one. Sink or float? Float. Float? Nope. Break to the bottom. How about this one? Number one. Sink or float? Song. Oh. And how about this one? That one said, um, float. Yay. Ho, 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 ho. Now, what is happening here, Simon? I want you to use your scientific genius nerddom knowledge and explain to me why I have three totally separate results. What has happened? Physics has happened. Can you explain yeah, it? Um. Well, the surface tension um might have well um water kind of defies gravity. There. <laughs> if you're unsure, it's okay to say you're unsure. Water defies gravity. Water is the only natural thing that defies gravity. Yeah, so it could have to do with gravity. Because instead of going down in water, it's you go up. Okay. Well, how about, like, a little hint? Or maybe... Oh, look, he's going to give you a hint. Or maybe each... Oh, wait. Maybe... Um, I was, I was going to say maybe, um, the... Each glass has a little bit, is a little bit more dense. Oh, yeah. And we have another guess too, uh, or another um, prediction that it's because of the age of the egg. Oh, that's a great, great thing. Now, okay, so let's do this. Let's do this. I want you guys to watch, okay? I will take egg number three. change it with egg number two. What do you think will happen with egg number two? Is it a magic egg? Is number two going to float or sink in here? I don't know. I'm going, um, maybe it was, it, just it was just floating right here. What's going to happen I now? think it might sink. I agree. And this one will probably float. Will probably float. So it's the water so difference. What, what does that tell you? If it's not the egg, Density of the water? You're very, you're, you're, yes, it does have to do with density of the water. But why is this one at the halfway point? It's kind of neutrally buoyant. You see that? It's halfway down, halfway up. Can you explain that one to me, Simon? Um, is it because the egg is the Titanic that fell on the cliff of the ocean? Sadly, no, it is not. <laughs> okay. And it is a magic one either because if I put it in there, that will... Oh, look, it's at the same height there that it was over here. Well, maybe it's because um, that egg is balancing on the other egg. That was exactly right. Great. So there you go. That one will now sink to the bottom, and if I put that in here, it should... Okay, 
Simon, explain this to me, because I don't understand. It's what? called magic. Okay, listen. It's called magic. It's science we don't understand yet. It's kind of magic. Well, it is kind of magic. Magic so is science we don't understand that, yet. That these were all regular warm water. saturated salt water solution. Mm. I don't, um. I kept testing it to make sure that I would get the egg to float all the way to the top. Well, maybe it's because, um, the salt is floating, which is forcing the egg to float too? Partially, yes. So I've changed the density of this water by adding salt or sodium chloride to this water. This one is just regular H2O. This one is H2O plus NaCl, which is sodium chloride or salt. But how do you explain this one? My Number brain one. is so messed up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I stumped you. <laughs> Again, yes. <laughs> so, you want I'm I'm if just a kid in second grade. My stuffer, if anybody can tell me how that happens, you get a prize from me. All right. So we do have some um, um, thoughts that came in earlier. So one was that items can float in salt water. Another one was about water temperature. We had another one about salt water as well. So now we know, because you've said that all glasses have the same temperature of water, a warm water, and we also know that you have salt added to make the egg float. It was added to number two. Yep. Yes. And now we've got the suspending egg, and if anyone can tell why. Well, um, here's maybe one. Sure, what's your idea, Simon? Maybe because, um, well... This is probably not true, but um, eggs are usually um, like sort of oval shape, and that one is kind of circle shape. So that that oh, egg. So the first one might not be an egg, and you're trying to trick me. But they all look exactly the same. They're all identical, Simon. But Simon, do you remember he even changed the eggs from the different glasses around and they still did the same thing? Right? Okay. So what does that tell you? We're talking about some variables earlier on. Okay, so we have one guess that it's only a little bit of salt. Well, I was going to say that, so congratulations. Oh, you both have the same answer. Only a little bit of salt. Well, there is a secret to this. And the secret, there's two ways of doing it. If you have a funnel, a long funnel, and you take some of the salt water from this solution, or this, this glass, and you pour it into the bottom, and bring it up to about this mark, right where the egg is balancing, you then very slowly add water on top as a distinct layer, because fresh water will sit on top of the salt water. So I'm giving you a hint as to what's happening over here with number two. Oh. Which water, what kind of water is more, more dense? Regular fresh water or salt water? Which one's more dense? Salt water because it has an extra thing added. Very good. I am just so well, confused what, right what do you now. Think happened here? Um, adding, um, salt water on the bottom and water on the top and then putting the egg there because that's what you said how to do it. Okay, now watch what happens if I take this and I pour it in here. Huh? It sunk. Why? 
maybe it's because um the water um switched sides because like salt water and just normal water then salt water and i mean then water and salt water did i stump you again no not really i think that's um James, we've got a lot of good thoughts coming in here. What has happened, there's lots going on, it is that on the bottom initially was very dense salt water, and I carefully layered fresh water on top of it, and I didn't let them mix. When I agitated that mixture by pouring it into the second glass, this one, all that water mixed together, and there was not enough salt in the solution to make it buoyant like it is here. So it went down to the bottom. Okay? See all this fun stuff you can do in your backyard at home? Well, James, we I think you're going to be giving away a lot of prizes. Morgan and Owen had guessed that uh, it's half pure water and half salt solution in glass one. Um, we also had another comment that the eggs float because there's more salt in the water, just like the Dead Sea, where you can only float. We had another comment that fresh water is on top and salt water is on the bottom. Excellent. Very good. So, Simon, you have two glasses here. Now, I want you to tell me, with your eggs, which glass has salt water in it and which glass has fresh water in it. Nice and loud. And this one has like, this one has more white thingies and this one is like just clear. Okay. So, so let me guess, this is the one with salt water or a mixture of that and this is just regular water. Okay, so you take one egg and let's see what happens. Oh, all the way to the bottom which so, tells so us. So that's regular water. Okay, now let's test this glass. This might be the middle one. Well, it's like a little white island. Yep, it floated. So what's your guess? Sink and float? Salt water, regular water. Very good. And that, that brings us to our third activity here. Our last activity of the day. So we need you guys to bring in some more stumpers for James. Salt, normal. All right. That's We've been talking about chemistry of different things. We've been talking about density of different things. How many of you guys drink pop? Probably everybody. No, not me. But well, that's a great answer, Simon. So, Simon, can you see what that is? That's 7-Up. Do you think that this can of 7-Up will float, or do you think it will sink? Um, probably float because, um, if you open it, um, it would not just be like, hey, let me out, I'm at the surface. That's true, but I'm not going to open for them. So let's see what happens with your 7-Up. They don't want to go. Nope. Oh, I, it kind of floats, kind of not. It, it does. What do you think will happen with a Pepsi? My mom's, a.k.a. my mom's favorite drink. Okay, what do you think will happen with your mom's favorite drink? Float. Haha, <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, smart. Oh, what about orange Fanta? Float. 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 Oh, my goodness. You see that one right to the bottom. Also, you landed it. You also landed it. But here's a Pepsi Zero. Wait, is that the kind with no or sugar? Pepsi Max Zero Sugar. Okay. Float again. Float Army is beating the Sink Army. Float. Ah, yay. A Pepsi Vanilla. Float. I'm winning. Oh, wait. Oh, look it, look it. The ginger beer. Right to the bottom. 
So Surrey? So Red Bull came out of Vision. What about that one? I don't know. Red Bull. Please float, please float. Oh look it's suspended for a moment. Yes, float, float. Zero sugar, coke, orange, vanilla. Okay. Please float, please float. Yay. Now, Simon. Simon. What? I want you to figure out why some of these have gone right to the bottom and why other ones are floating. Uh, maybe it's because um the ones that are floating have small air sockets and the other ones don't. So there, take a good look at this. You see that? Oh, wait. Some of them are flipped upside down. Well, yes, they flipped upside down. But do you see that they're floating in there? Uh, yeah. James, okay. we have a comment here. Okay. Red Bull doesn't give you wings because it's sunk. <laughs> all right so simon i want you to try your cans too and think about why this is happening so we have some here as well we have sprite to start with Sprite. okay go ahead simon this is not the one in the big green bottle oh okay let's see oh go ahead like it drop it booty. drop it yeah it looks very very big so the sprite sunk right to the bottom your hand looks Whoop, very big i now. overflowed <laughs> i overflowed us here and i got simon wet too you don't okay there but <laughs> don't get my beautiful coat wet okay we have grape soda go yeah. ahead simon mm. what did the grape soda do we have to tell james because he can't see us right now it sunk kind of i'm getting away from here well so why don't you reach in so that your hand is smaller than mine it won't displace the water as much Okay, grab the grape soda sunk right to the bottom for us. We got some sour grapes. Okay, we have ginger ale. Go ahead, Simon. Ginger ale. Ginger ale. Ginger ale. Ginger ale. Oh, what did that one do? Sauce spoon. It's suspended. It's sauce spoon. It's starting to go towards the bottom, but it's mostly suspended. Okay, take that one out. We have three more here to test. So, so far we've got three for three have sunk. And we've got a big mess too, which is always fun. No. Okay, we have Orange Crush. Why is everything sinking? It's sunk as well. The we have sink, two left. The sink army is beating the float army. We have root beer. Please float. Oh, look at the root beer. It kind of suspended, but then it... Float. It's kind of floating, but I think it's slowly sinking back down, too. Come on, come to Papa. And our last one... It's floating, it's floating. Our... Mom's here. And our last one is Diet Pepsi that we're going to try. What do you think will happen? It will sink or float, Simon? Float. It's floating. Yeah. So really, out of all of ours, the <laughs> only one that floated was the Diet Pepsi. And why is that, Simon? Maybe it's because there's an air socket on the Diet Pepsi and none in the other ones. Not air, it's... Density? Sugar. Sugar, okay. The sugar content inside those different products. So when I dropped the Fanta in, it went straight to the bottom. But if you use something with no sugar, zero sugar, a diet version of something, it tends to float. Okay? And it's floating because it is more dense or less dense than the water? Less dense? Very good. And why then is the orange Fanta down on the bottom? 
Because it's more dense. It is more dense I because it has all that sugar inside it. I always and thought metal sugar what? inside makes them that dense. So density is the measure of mass over volume. And these are the same size, have the same volume. So density is which one weighs more. Well, so we could put the balance. I think we them. I think we can know how I, I think we don't even need a scale for that. We could just go close up on the bottle and see how much it weighs. Well, I'll tell you what the volume is on the side of the can. But what it won't tell you is how much mass is, because they don't want to tell you how much sugar is in there. Okay? But one of our next activities, we can actually figure out how much sugar is in these. Okay? Simon, do you have any more stumpers for me? Ah, uh, yeah. I don't think th these will stump you. Okay, let's give it a try. Um, okay. Um, what's the most dangerous acid? Well, that's a great question. I'm going to answer that question from my experience. All acids are dangerous if used improperly. Acids need to be stored properly and safely. Nitric acid in proximity, so just close to acetic acid, can actually explode. All right? But I'm guessing you wanted me to say something like, Sulfuric acid. Is that the one you were thinking about? Um, no, it's actually a super acid named fluorosulfuric acid. It's a million times stronger than sulfuric acid. That is true, but you can't find that easily. You need to have special licenses for that product, okay? So follow your teacher's instructions, wear your goggles. Wear your lab coats, wear your aprons, all that stuff. Follow the instructions to the letter, okay? Are lab coats just to look cool, or is it for safety? It is for safety. If you think that wearing goggles makes you look cool, that's great. But it is for safety to protect your eyes. Lab, lab coat also makes you look cool, and that's also for safety. It's both. Yeah. Lab coats do make you look very cool. All right, James, we have a couple more jokes here from Simon. And while he tells those jokes, we'll let our audience know it's your last chance to stump James. Um, however, if you come up with questions later or you're not watching this live, you have until Friday to ask James a stumper. You can just put it in the comment section at any time. So, Simon, a couple more jokes. A duck beetle walks in the restaurant and says, Excuse me, is the stool taken? School is another word for poop. I heard, I got it, don't worry. That's a joke, Simon. Now, Simon, I would like you to tell the last one on the page nice and loud so James can hear it. Okay. Why did the physics teacher break up with the biology teacher? Why did the physics teacher break up with the biology teacher? I don't know. Oh, I know, I know. Because there was no chemistry. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> he got it. He got it. I got it. All right. Do you want to say um, one last one then? How about number four there? I know that was stop science joke. It's on the tip of my tungsten. Tungsten as in the element. And if it's on the tip of your tongue, that means you can't really say it. Gotcha. Good one. Very good. All right, All right, so... I have to go back to the actual Flynn lab now. Can we see it? Can you see it? Sure. The next time, we'll do one from down at my, my lab, okay? Yay. All right. Okay, so Deal. what do you have to say to James? Bye. And? <laughs> Thank you.
You're very welcome. Thanks for spending time with me today. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.